Welcome to Fading Memories, a podcast with advice, wisdom, and hope from caregivers who have lived the experience and survived to tell the tale. Think of us as your caregiver best friend. I am pleased and honored today on this 200th episode of Fading Memories podcast to welcome Tipa Snow to the show. Thanks so much for joining me, Tipa. Well, thank you for having me. Wow, and a 200th anniversary. You don't look that old. (laughs) That is what I love about you. I had the pleasure of attending one of your in-person trainings July July 2019 in Brentwood, California, which is not a very big town, so I was surprised that you weren't more into the San Francisco area, but really thrilled because it made it easy to go. Yeah, sometimes um, it's interesting. People or groups would have me into smaller locations for that very reason, because this thing about dementia, it doesn't necessarily make going places really easy if it's going to be involved, you know? So, yeah. (laughs) That is true. There was probably about six or eight of us from my Alzheimer's Association support group that went and the gal that I was sitting next to she kept going oh I didn't know that oh that's my dad all the oh oh I was just like I'm so glad she's getting a lot out of it light bulb light bulb light bulb yeah. you're going like oh Pavarazzi <laughs> yeah really <laughs> so I love the way you teach because I am a, an artistic visual person and a very visual learner but I also have to learn by doing And you incorporated all of that, and it was fantastic. So I'm totally recommending that anybody, now that we're into the year 2022, (laughs) anybody that can go to one of TIPA's seminars, trainings, whatever, go, because it's a whole lot of fun, and you're going to learn some good stuff, too. Cool. Yeah, I mean, yeah, we're looking forward to finally being able to be with one another again. I mean, we really have gotten pretty good at the internet thing like you have, but still, there is a chemistry and a magic when we're with one another, and it has to do with being human, that it really does matter. I mean, there's something different about being in person with people. That is very very true. So, we are going to discuss your GEM models, which is focuses on how we can work with what they have left instead of focusing on everything that they are losing, which is very hard and it's very depressing. It is, but you know, like, um, so how many times have Jennifer, have you decided, Oh, I want a donut because it has a hole in it versus I want a donut because of what's in the ring around the donut hole. Uh, yeah, that's true. (laughs) Yeah. And so what we want to start recognizing, yeah, there are holes in people's brains, there's holes in abilities, but if all we do is focus on the whole, we're talking about something that's not there anymore. How is that really super helpful other than as awareness for us? But if we're talking what's still possible for them, well, what's possible for them is what they have left. So if I can't, I can't come up with a, um, when you say it, the thing you say, um, <laughs> the word, <laughs> Oh, yeah, the word thing. That's what I was saying. The word. Yeah. When I couldn't come up with that, but I have a, you know, when you're, um, you're trying to, uh, you, you're, you, you, it's not like, yeah, yeah. Like I was trying to remember something. I couldn't think of the thing that you say, but I was remembering, you know, when we went to the, and and it's like, This is like playing a game, but it isn't a game. It's my brain giving me certain things and holding out on other things. And when you can help me fill in the blank spaces, then I can keep moving. When the blank spaces get so big and you don't know how to help me keep moving, then we're both lost. Because, you know, if we just are trying to get them to tolerate care and we're too there's too many holes what we think we're doing that's helpful they think is not and so we lose one another and yet if we can start thinking about them as this amazing gem different but still worthy of support and care and and that will work it it actually makes a difference for both of us because it's not like i don't want to be helpful i just don't know how to do it if somebody doesn't help me figure out what to do differently so that you still can be this you that you used to be, but you're different. (laughs) That is true. 
in the last year of my mom's life, she was, she was, the more help she needed, the less she was willing to accept it. So I tried to help the care staff with some of your model, but it was hard when, you know, you're not there. And she, she got really feisty, which was her personality, but it was, it was a challenge. So, it was a challenge because they kept doing things that to her were irritants. And they kept seeing themselves as trying to be helpful and her being resistive. And rather, and rather than saying, wow, that's really hard. Um, I think I, so you're seeing it like this and I was seeing it like this. But if we're not careful, all we do is create this. And it's like, well, that's not getting anywhere. So instead, you know, like, hey, let's see if we can figure this one out and how to do that. But care staff are trained to provide care as though the person is interested in care, understands care, accepts care. And the problem with dementia is I don't even understand why you're doing, I, I can do that. Get your hands off me. Um, yeah. So mm, we have, to, and that's why I created the gem. So we could quit seeing it always as this negative and see, wow, she, she can be really sharp, but she can also shine. She recognizes a desire to be independent but she lacks some of the skills that are required. But if you push at her, she'll, she'll push back really hard. Yep, that was mom. And it didn't, it didn't help anybody in the end, unfortunately. She, she got annoyed to say with the care staff after a shower. They said she reached for her clothes and slipped. But there were two of them. So I know my mom, she didn't reach for her clothes. She went... And grabbed at the clothes and slipped because yep. she was kind of flinging herself away from one and yep. and she fell and yeah. broke her leg and that was that was the end of that road that was the spiral that was the mm -hmm. spiral that led to her ultimate death uh, and it turns out about half of everybody who gets dementia when they break a hip when they break a significant joint um, that actually within six months they will have a passage you know it's, yeah, she it, that happened march 8th last year 2020 uh -huh. we're not recording this in 2022 yet people and she passed away march 31st which was a blessing which most of yeah. my listeners know because mom and i i would take her to the park or wherever to watch kids because that's what gave her joy and that's what she could do so that's what i did yeah yeah and we wouldn't have been able to do that during the pandemic so <laughs> That was, you know, and so you got the gift. The gift was the being, was hanging on for a little bit. So that did get to happen because that was really important for closure. And I, I, have, ha I have had people who, who, who stayed, not because they felt a lot of pleasure in being there most of the time, but because there was something yet left to do. They weren't quite complete, whatever their complete was. And, and sometimes it was some very interesting things that I would never have thought of because they are who they are um, with, with variations on that theme. That Man. is true. I was able to see her the day before she passed because I didn't see her the last two weeks, but I did get to see her the day before. And I've had dogs all my life, which was uh, one of the stories my mom told all the time. And I've been there with the dog. So I knew when I saw her, I was like, mm, yeah, we're, we're not going to be going to the park anytime soon. And so I, I knew what was coming. That, that helped a lot. And I just, I just told her, I said, you know what? We're all good. It's fine. You know, you did a great job. Go find dad, Chuck, because she thought I was her best friend. So I wasn't sure who she thought was talking to her. Like, go Good find your parents. It's cool. We're all, we're all going to be great. It's okay. And then that was, she died within about 30 hours. Yeah. Yeah. And what you're demonstrating in this story is your ability to let go of one relationship to support her in her need for a relationship that made sense to her brain in that moment and to offer her relationships that because of her time traveling and her memory issues and her holes that whoever was important that she was looking for that had already passed over 
they were the ones that would show her where she was going next, this transition. And we're good here, so you should go find them. You know, go and, go and get with them because this is where you should be now. And, and I use the pearl as that gem state, that last gem state, when the person is trapped inside the shell of the body. I mean, and the person is still in there, but there are only moments in time when the shell relaxes enough that you get to see the beautiful, amazing gem inside there, that layer by layer by layer built on a grain of sand, you know, the es- essence of that human being. And if you do it just right, the reflexes will relax just a little and look, they're whole. I mean, it's a whole person. It is a very different person, but it's a whole person. And if you know what made that person, so you've got to know what made them them. Then you offer this opportunity, the art of letting something go. So they're okay to go because everything's okay. And that's huge in, in this transition, this final transition, which we all say we're ready for and we never really are. I mean, it that's is true. so <laughs> hard to be ready for it. I mean, the number of people that I watch go, mom, come on, one more bite. Come on, open, open, please, mom, please. Come on, come on, take a drink just for me, mom. Come on, here, mom, come on, mom. And it's like, oh, okay, I hear it, I get it. You're telling me, and then in the next few words say, you know, whenever she's ready to go, man, I I don't want to <laughs> make her stay. I really want to, you know, and it's like, I don't know that that's the message you're sending her. I mean, I, I know you think it, but what you just said, mom, please, please, you got to stay. Take one more bite for me. And it's like, wow, it is really hard not to equate food and drink with life. Mm-hmm. And yet at the end of this disease, my brain can't even make use of it when you put it in, which is why I eat aspiration or I get, con- you know, impactions. I get problems with uh, you know, it's just so problematic because my brain and my body are just going, what else do I need to do before I go? I mean, I've cleaned house. I've, I mean, I'm empty. I, you know, I'm trying to empty out actually, because it's so much easier to leave an empty, you know, dry house than it is one that's flooded or got all kinds of debris around in it. That's a good analogy. I mean, we have a hard time with that, though, because, you know, we come into this world hungry and and for, you know, thirst and hunger and thirst and, you know, and and it is really it's time to transition past this place. And and that's where I mean, for me, that's helping people get to a place of if you stay, if I am, I find joy in your presence. But if it's time for you to go, I accept and and we are going to be okay here. And I may even need to step away from you because moms can't leave their kids. You know, if kids That's- step away, then moms can go, but not when mom, not when the kids are there kind of thing. Your spouses sometimes. People will say, I just went to the bathroom. It's like, yes, and thank you for needing to pee. I mean, that <laughs> demonstrates you're human and your mom needed you not to be there so she could step further on because she would not leave you if she could, if she had any ability at all. It's just, it's really hard to step away from people you love. I always told people, I'm ready for this journey to be over. My mom had Alzheimer's for 20 years. Mm-hmm. It was a really long time. Yeah, it is. Ugh. And then and then when it happened, I was shocked at how surprised <laughs> and it was like, why am I so upset about this? This is like, you know, and it just, and at the beginning, beginning of the pandemic and yeah. we had moved. Ugh. 2020 was not a fun year. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I mean, in 2021 has turned out to be such a pain in the took us too because we thought, okay, we're going to come on back. And it's sort of like after the hip fracture where people think she'll come on back. And it's like, and not. <laughs> yeah. Um, it's been, it's been an interesting couple of years. Yeah, My true. paternal grandmother lived to be 103 with her mind intact. Wow. And so that is my goal. And I am really curious to see what you know like 2056 will look like because i'll be 90 at that point which is like whoa (laughs) but it's like we've lived through so much stuff it's like i would like to see how how this is how does this all turn out yeah well how does it turn out but how does history document it you know i've lived through it and and i tried to get stories from my nana 
about, you know, the past and my dad and his brothers and all that good stuff. But she was very hard of hearing, so it was not easy. And, you know, it's just, I was just curious, like, what, you know, she was born during the first pandemic, the Spanish flu. Uh, not that yeah, she remembered yeah, I was going to say, well, your grandpa, yeah, she was around during that. And um, I can remember at my mom's law, we have a, we had a lake cabin in near Shanksville, Pennsylvania, which should bring a bell um, for flight 93. Um, but there was a tiny cemetery near and there were 15 headstones, two adults and 13 little ones. Ooh, painful. And it was that time period. And it was an entire family. An entire family was wiped out. And the husband was 47 and the wife was 39. And the kids were, you know, it was like, wow. And at the time, I mean, we always went and we would always look at that and be amazed that a whole family. And then we have COVID and it's like, <laughs> son of a gun. This is how that happened. Wow. Because they I mean, again, this, this, this COVID thing was the similar kind of like, no matter what we did, we didn't know what to do with it at first. Um, and people would just catch it and it would go through and it would be like, wow. So, you know, that idea of how our end happens, well, it's how we live until it ends. And that's where this gem idea really becomes powerful for me is, you know, because our brains can change dramatically over the course of a day. Um, I mean, and if you think about it, when you're sleeping, you're sort of in a pearl state because you don't know what's going on on the outside world. Um, and if something were to startle, you would come up and you would be very reflexive. Um, and so there's there's meaning to the gems, not just about dementia, but if we look at our own periods of time during the day when I get rigid and inflexible and I'm, I'm sharp, and then sometimes I'm absolutely lovely as long as it's going my way. <laughs> I get a little rigid and diamond-like when I'm getting hangry and the husband's not ready for dinner. <laughs> big one. That is a big one. So what your brain is saying is you're, you have some unmet needs. And if you won't address them, I'll help you notice them. And what I'm going to do is make you react and be. And, and then when you get satisfied, did you notice how you're not like that? And it's like, mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> which your brain still goes, but that was just because I was hungry. And it's like, uh-huh. <laughs> so, so like it takes a really flexible sapphire brain to go, oh, so you know what I should probably program in is that we need to make sure that my meals are no more than this far apart because truly when they get further than that, my brain starts to really have trouble with, Things that don't go the way I like, um, but I can be fine as long as things are going my way. And then, you know what I do sometimes? I'm sure this doesn't happen to you, Jennifer. Sometimes when I've not got what I like for a while, I will overindulge. That's true. <laughs> yes, I have a midnight Hershey bar. No, midnight Milky Way sitting here. It's my, uh, it's a gateway drug. I have to be very oh. careful with those things. <laughs> And so our brain goes, yeah, you shouldn't. And then, and then, so then it's like, well, I will, I will skip breakfast. And it's like, okay, now you watch your head. Your head just went, bad idea. No, bad idea. Bre no skipping breakfast. I turn into a witch yeah. and then I go to sleep. <laughs> yeah, see? And so your brain warns you and you learn these things over time and they become patterns and routines and habits. So you don't have to think about it. You know, and you're, you, that's a very, but if I said, well, you know what, we're running late. How about if we just grab a, a donut and a cup of coffee? Mm. Your brain goes, ooh, donut. <laughs> but at the same time, your thinking brain goes, that's probably not going to hold me very long. I'm not sure I want to rush on sugar and caffeine first thing in the morning. Nope, that doesn't work too well for me. Mm -hmm. And I'm also a tea person. <laughs> oh, yeah. So you're good in so many ways. 
So we're we're dancing around this gem thing, aren't we? Yeah, we've 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 touched on it a little bit, but we haven't actually defined it. So the sapphire is a normal aging brain. It is, and it's us on a good day. Now I say that because it's really important to know as a care partner, a caregiver, it is really easy sometimes to get rigid and inflexible. Because I like what I like, and I want you to behave, and I want this to go well, and I want your sister to do more, and I want, you know, all these things that um, we talk about sometimes. And when we say them, we go, I know she's doing the best she can. However, (laughs) (laughs) so the next gem is a diamond. And diamonds are clear and sharp, but they're also rigid and inflexible. They have lots of facets, but it's really hard for people to get new things in when you're in a diamond state. But at the same time, you sometimes can say things that seem like, wow, ooh, or think things that are not quite accurate, but you're really sure you're right. Yeah, and- I've, I've had some of those personal uh, beliefs before. <laughs> yeah. And so when you have dementia, the challenge is that you truly do start to think people are trying to do something and it's not right. And you might try to recruit other people along your line. And, and at the same time, you can be absolutely well, no. And so the other thing about being in a diamond state is I recognize authority figures. And I also notice people who have power. I'm not stupid. I'm really smart. So, so when I'm with the doctor, I can actually pull it all together and organize and double check my information before I go in there. And I, and so you who've been around me are like, (laughs) she is, I mean, this is not how she is every day. I'm telling you. And the doctor say, well, I mean, I, frankly, I mean, I saw her. And so one of the things, you know, that always is like, well, she's just MCI. And it's like, really? I mean, uh, this isn't exactly how she is at home because that MCI, she's just mild cognitive impairment. It's like, I thought I was sure because she doesn't remember sometimes what we've done. Well, you know, you know people don't remember. It's like, mm. but that, that performance thing that people do, whether it's the lawyer, whether it's the office, whether it's the kids out of town that come in, where it starts to make you feel like, well, maybe, I mean, am I imagining this stuff? <laughs> And you really do start to second guess yourself, like, well, maybe it's me. And you're holding the hand up, it's like, am I the problem? <laughs> and then you realize, if you're, if you're aware, you start to realize, oh, no, it's just her brain gave her everything she had for this performance. Because she's not stupid. And she knows that a physician could change your life. Uh, the kids from out of town, that's really exciting. So her brain gives her a lot of extra chemistry for that visit. But then she crashes. <laughs> afterward yep. because she used it all up and then there's this catastrophic meow, meow, really mean thing it's like this is all your fault you're the one that wanted them to come for two weeks and it's like I don't know. <laughs> I mean, mom what are you talking about and it just feels like i never said that you did too you just said you'd had enough of me and it's like what? and it's like wow And so we view those as catastrophic because the person is still very aware of what can hurt us. I was always surprised. My mom thought I was her best friend, would tell everybody, I've known her forever. And I'm thinking, yeah, you think? (laughs) It was always kind of comical when she'd say that to the care staff. Yeah. And, but yet she knew how to push all the buttons. Mm Mm-hmm. Just she like a mom there. would know. You, you, I mean, do That's you remember? True. Yeah, she gave them to you. She put them yeah. in place, and she was always real good at pushing them before. I mean, and you're good at pushing hers too. I mean, that's the tricky part is we we can sometimes spouses are often the worst because I mean we have that deep relationship where we really know. But spouse partners, I mean, honestly, they can be the hardest because they know intimate things about each other. But parents and single children often, you know, that relationship is also really intense. And so what can happen is it can become weaponized. Um, And it can be this wonderful binding and strength. But if we're not careful, we could use it against one another. And then when your mom or the person that you're, you're loving a lot slips 
into this next gem state, which is emerald. And the main difference between diamond and emerald is what do you know? How would you know a diamond from an emerald? Just like that. What would, what would be the giveaway? One's green. One's green. Yeah. And so it's no longer clear and sharp. It's very clear something is going on. I mean, there is no disguising this anymore. I mean, this is not a clear, sharp brain. This is, whoa. And the thing about emeralds, one of the reasons I select emerald is all emeralds, true emeralds are flawed. That's how they have value. I mean, the the meaning of an emerald is it is, and it has a flaw in it, but the emerald may or may not know it's flawed. I mean, not a bit. The thing about green is if you think of a traffic light, what's green light mean? Go. <laughs> go. And these are people on the go. So they go, but they aren't sure where they're going all the time, when they're going, and what it is they're exactly doing when they're going, but they think they know. So they could skip a lot of steps. They can get stuck in a, in a cycle and not know how to come out of it. They can time travel. They can place travel. They can people travel. They can jump generations. They get lost in their life. They get lost in a task. So they eat. They come out of the kitchen. They come to the living room. They sit for a few minutes. It feels like a while. They head back. They get eat. And they. And it's like, Dad, you just ate. No, I didn't eat. I just was sitting in the living room. I know, but we just had lunch. Well, I missed it. <laughs> no, you, you didn't. Well, no, I didn't get anything. I mean, I've been sitting in there. Dad, you just went in there. You know, and without thinking, I become very rigid and inflexible because he's lost. It's like, come back. Come back here. <laughs> like calling the dog come come yeah. and the Doesn't dog is work. having a really good time having a party you know like oh but i found a friend mom like calling the golden retriever when they have a frisbee how's that work it doesn't i have two golden retrievers and the oh. youngest one's a rescue and if he gets out in open space he runs like he's been shot out of a cannon and does Joy, not come back at, yep oh yeah doesn't come back till he's exhausted which is terrifying uh, there you go. And it, and it feels like what? We're so bad to you that you got to run away? <laughs> yeah, no, it's the joy of seeing what's next, what's next, what's next. And so this is this uh, sundowning syndrome that a, a lot of people talk about. As the day wears on and my brain chemistry goes, this is where, this isn't where I stay. I've got to go home. And you're like, well, you are home. No, I'm talking about my house. Or I got to get to work. Or where are the kids? I thought they'd be home by now. I mean, because this, place and time disassociation or, you know, like, well, I need to fix dinner. Mom, you know, it's like, ah, and that, that dislocation is hard for us because it's like, what is she talking about? It's like, she's talking about a life she had 20 years ago or uh, the house that she's looking for, which is the house she grew up in or, you know, she thinks she's in a dormitory when she's living in an assisted living. You want to know when spring break is because giving it back to her lets her sort of hear it. And if she truly is in, you know, like college again, yeah, you know, the break is because we get off, right? And you're going to come pick me up. So you were <laughs> hoping that I would come pick you up because you're ready for a break. Yeah, I hear you. Yeah, you've been working really hard. So, how you feel about all the people. Well, I mean, you know, and so what I'm really trying to figure out what's causing her brain in this moment to want to be in another place with other people doing something else. Because what I'm going to tell you is something that's going on around her is she can't handle it anymore. She wants and needs something different. And so she, unless we can figure out what that is and how to offer something She's going to continue to try to exit, seek, um, get away, uh, find somebody, try to do something that isn't safe. Not because she's trying to cause trouble, but because her brain is so scared that this isn't right and she's seeking. She's in a seeking mode or in a hiding mode. Yeah. I always learned that when they say, I want to go home, I want to go home, they're looking for like a feeling. So I'm not. I don't think I'm 100% right or wrong on that one. No, you're right exactly on that because it's a feeling of friendly, familiar, functional, 
forgiving. It's a good sensory match. I, I see what I like to see. I feel what I like to feel. I hear what I want to hear. Or the other side of it is I'm in an environment where I don't like what I'm, it's unfamiliar. It, it, it's not functional. I don't know what to do here. Um, I don't feel forgiven. People are being mean here. They aren't really being mean, but I don't know what they, they they're saying. Tipa, 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 uh-uh, uh-uh, Tipa, don't go to the door. Come on, come back. And, and so even though to them, they're just trying to help me, we're back to that phrase again. I see it as them trying to trick me or make me do something. And they're just being really mean. But their voice, Tipa, Tipa, uh-uh, no, ma'am, you can't go in that room. That's not your room. I, I mean, well, I, I'm sorry. Why can't I go? In? Because it's not your room. Well, where is my, well, this is not my room. And that sense of being trapped or abandoned is very real. And so that sense of home is that heart place, you know? And so people th- will often think like it's where I grew up and stuff, but it was that feeling I had in that space. Um, and you're makes right. Sense. Yeah. So there are, there are some people who are successful with going in the car, going around the block and arriving at home, quote, yeah. air quotes there for those who aren't watching the video. Yeah. And is that just because they're, it's like a distraction? Because I'm all, I'm always surprised when that works. Oh, okay, cool. Well, that has a brain physiology to it because the hippocampus, which is what that, that deep part of your brain that helps you learn and remember things. And it's where that memory store is. Well, the other thing it is responsible for is helping you find your way from place to place in the world. I mean, so that's one of its jobs is go, it's called spatial orientation, but it's your ability to go from uh, your house to the grocery store, to the gas station, to the bank, and then to your house. Okay. I mean, that actually takes a lot of work for a brain to be able to do that because it's right turn, right turn, left turn. Then there's a straight line, then a right turn. And then from there you go, but now to get back home, you have to do a whole different. So it's a lot of learning about space. And then it also is keeping up with the passage of time. Your hippocampus helps you keep up with how long it's been since you ate breakfast, since you um, saw a friend, since you live somewhere. So if I take you out of one space and show you and have you experience a lot of other things, it tricks your hippocampus into thinking when you come back to a familiar space, oh, I've come home because you actually took me and and caused my hippocampal area to do something other than want what it had before, which it can't have. And so when we get back, what happens is our brain sees the unfamiliar now as familiar because I've been in an unfamiliar place. I gave my hippocampus so many other things to look at and notice and try to hook into memories that when I see this place now, it's like, Oh, here's where I live. And it's like, you're right. And, you know, and so we come in the door and it's like, oh, I'm home because I got to experience something else. And now I come back to what feels better to me. That makes sense. It won't now, always work, but it can. Well, I was just going to ask, okay, so when it doesn't work, is that because somebody's maybe in a different gem state or their brain isn't getting enough of that change? Well, it work? It, uh, yeah, that's a really good question. And it could be both of those. So number one, it could be that they are actually in more of the next gem state, which is an amber state, when it's all about sensory. And they're just overwhelmed. I mean, they are they are so overdone. They've they've had too much stimulation or too little, or it's too much visual, or it's too auditory, or they are they are so not able to get satisfied. It's not about going somewhere. It's truly about feeling better. And they can't figure out what's wrong. So they don't know how to make it better. Because they don't know what they're feeling is an impaction. They don't realize what they're feeling is wet because they wouldn't let anybody help them get changed. They don't realize what they're feeling is a dry mouth or that they're um, they're hungry. Where you were recognizing 
oh, as you took your first bite, your brain went, oh, yeah, I was hungry. That was what was going on. (laughs) They can't recognize, even when they eat, that that's what they needed. And so they're still going, no, no. And you're, ah, because everything we would offer to comfort is now uncomfortable. And so that can be part of it because the amber state is all about sensory need and sensory tolerance or intolerance because it's really about really being much more driven by what I feel, what I see, what I smell, what I taste, living in the moment of time um, and not being able to be past present at all. Um, The other thing that could be happening is there wasn't enough of a change. Like we were changing the place, but what really needs to change is the person I'm with. Because in that moment, I'm tired of you. I mean, I'm sorry, but we get tired of one another. I mean, and I guarantee you when that's happening, guess who else is tired of me? Who we're trying our hardest, they're trying their hardest. And that's one of the hardest things for us to acknowledge is, you know what? We're doing the best we can. Absolutely. But you know who else is? So are they. I mean, it's just that really awful place we get with each other where we feel trapped in the relationship and we don't know who else. We don't have another to call on. And so we keep doing something that we know isn't good for us and it's actually not good for them. And it just makes it worse. And that's, you know, I'm a strong advocate early on for saying, hello, I'm going to need some support here. And I'm probably going to need it in the afternoon because <laughs> that's my that's my time of ugh. right after lunch. I really need some time away. I need a little siesta time, not a not a sleeping, but I need to move away from people and do stuff. Um, so if you keep me with somebody during that time, the whole time, then I get a little grumpy by evening. I can relate. <laughs> yeah. You know, whereas some people, it's like they can keep going till three something and then they're done. They're done. They want to go to the nest. They just want to be done with it. And it's like, I hear you. I hear you. I'm not like that, but I can hear that. And then we have night owls who don't want to be messed with in the morning. I mean, they really can't tolerate a lot of early morning anything. 10 o'clock, 11 you know, that's when they, you should wake up and start thinking about a day, you know, I'm just saying, you know, for people. And so sometimes it's a real mismatch on circadian pattern between the two of us. Yeah, God forbid I have to take care of my daughter because she is a total mm-hmm. night owl and I am, I am a total daytime person. Mm-hmm. My husband makes the joke that I am solar powered. Mm-hmm. So when the sun is up, I'm up. And when the sun is down, I'm You're out. done. <laughs> yep. And it took me a long time to learn that shorter visits with mom were better than long ones. Sweetheart, get, t- up. get up, get up. I'm ready to go. And she's like, mom, it's five 30 friggin' AM. <laughs> it's like, well, it's time to go. I just got to bed. <sighs> that would be her. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Fortunately, I don't get up at five 30. It's about seven. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, she might not kill you. <laughs> <laughs> no, she doesn't want to kill me. <laughs> so oh, hopefully. Yeah. But I mean, that's, I mean, spouse pairs, we can be a spouse pair and have very different sleep schedules. And what can start to happen as mine changes, or I stay where I was, but now I don't want to be alone. (laughs) That can be a real, real drama for folks because that can wear people out. Or if I start having arthritis and I can't really get to sleep, I'm in, I'm in a lot of discomfort, but it's not bad enough that I think I'm in pain. Now, that really becomes, when we get to this amber state, my inability to identify my, from discomfort to pain, I don't ask for medications. I'm not going to seek out something to make me feel better. So, you have to become this master detective trying to figure this stuff out. And I may have, cookie, 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 I get a, I get a, get a, get a, get a, get a, get a cookie. I need a, get a, get a, get a cookie. Can I get a cookie? Cookie, get a cookie, and you offer me a cookie, and I I smack your hand away, and it's like I thought you wanted a cookie. Well, cookie doesn't necessarily mean cookie. <laughs> Ow. Yeah, the, learning their new language is a challenge. I mean, it is. How long did it take you to learn to do that play acting 
that you do so well. Because when I saw you in person, you went in and out of demented old woman state back to Tipa state so well. It was it was almost disorienting. No, sorry about that. Um, <laughs> it was fun. I, I know it's well. What's helpful is people go, "Oh my gosh, that's my mom," and it's like, hmm, "Uh huh." So that's that's me, but it's also dementia. And so I would say the good thing about my life is I was exposed to dementia when I was quite young. Um, My grandfather moved in. Of course, we didn't know it was dementia back then. We just thought he was eccentric. And then we thought, well, you know, he has COPD. And then we thought, well, he's just got mean. Um, But what he actually had was vascular dementia. We now, I mean, now I go, God, how can we not realize that? But we had no idea. But it gave me um, this ability to notice things as a kid. And then my grandma on the other side. And then I started working with people with developmental disabilities as a teenager. And so I've always been a like, sort of like you. I like to observe. I like to figure things out. I'm a detective. And I like to try things out. Um, so I would say probably 15 years or so, though, since being an occupational therapist and doing training, it just took me about 15 years to be able to assume and understand sort of some of the body stuff um, that happens. And so uh, yeah. <laughs> so to be able to just spontaneously, you know, do these things, because I've worked with so many different people. Um, and although they're each individuals, there's patterns that I can start to notice. It's fun watching your videos too when you when you do all that that training play acting it's it's so helpful. So I do- totally recommend if you guys are not following Tipa and the positive approach to care on YouTube, definitely do that. And make sure that you get her book The Caregiver's Guide on the Gem States which is linked in the show notes. She has newer books too. So you might want to check those out, but we're still talking about gems today. We just keep digressing a little bit. We have one more to go. I mean, and that one more is that ruby state. So let's go through that green light thing. So we had the green light, which is go. Okay. And then we had the, well, tell me what the yellow light means. Speed up and hurry up through the intersection. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, that's what it's supposed to be. <laughs> that's true. <laughs> it means caution, caution, which means I have a lot of curiosity and no caution. So in other words, I have no no safety awareness, Um, but I also am all driven by what I like and what I want. And I have absolutely no tolerance for what I don't like or don't want, or I don't think I need. And so not only do I have no tolerance, I will actually push back at it. And now depending on the human being, not everybody fights. They just go, no, 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 please, 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 no, please don't. Oh God, please. (laughs) Oh, oh, and they make you feel so bad. On the other hand, you can have people more like your mom, I suspect, and I imagine what I'm going to be like, which is get your yeah. My mom wasn't quite that bad, but well, yeah. actually, she she would claw people and draw blood. Yeah, yeah, because the spitting is one way of getting people to back off clawing or pinching or slapping. I mean, she's trying to get them away from her. And so it's always interesting to me how people would describe as she's aggressive. When I would say is what she is, is trying to defend her very self from who she thinks is being aggressive, which is us. Because in any other circumstances, who's who's okay with another person you don't know walking up and trying to take your pants off? <laughs> It's yeah, usually just, called sexual assault. <laughs> it is. It is. Or trying to shove something in your mouth when you've closed your mouth and they're trying to make something go in your mouth or trying to strip you out of clothing. I mean, it's just not something we view as normal until we get to a thing like dementia. And then we start thinking, well, you just have to. And it's like, really? Because I very rarely have to do something like that. And I can usually get people to work with me because under that yellow light, I use caution. I am always seeking permission. I have to slow way down and not try to get through that light. Because what I know is if I really build this up to a huge distress state, 
then what I'll have to do is more than likely drug the person to be able to get to do this over time because the brain is not dead. It starts to notice no, no, no. And we'll start to see anticipatory distress, anticipatory. And they will get where they, they get really worried about anything and and then it gets harder and harder to deliver care you know so you know it's just it's a cautionary measure that i think historically we just worked our way around by using medications and to an extreme typically and antipsychotics like they were cotton candy and anti-anxiolytics so the people could move so that we could get things done and there's a difference between being therapeutic and simply using drugs to get away with or, I mean, we used to use physical restraints. I mean, I've been around so long. We used to tie people up and tie their chairs to the wall mm. to keep that them ugly. safe. You know, we'd tie them in the bed and put rails up, and then they'd go over the rails and asphyxiate. I mean, we, I mean, we have a history with dementia that is pretty horrendous um, historically. And I think we're finally, well, you know, this pandemic has done some interesting things to what we've done to people. Um, who are living with dementia and what we, you know, what we've precipitated in our effort to keep them safe from COVID. And then we socially isolated them and, and left them alone a lot and wondered why, how that happened. So whole nother story. But the a lot of research, a lot of research tools or, you know, evidence that they're going to have that, that they're looking um, at now on that. I, yeah. I was an advocate for like, my mom never could have done a window visit. She would have had no oh. clue. Her, her visual processing was so bad. You know, and that it just, ugh, I was so grateful that I didn't have to, have to do, deal with that. So I think we learned a lot of things, but yeah, last year, or 2020, 2021, they weren't great. No, no. So we get to this gem, though, the, the ruby. So in the red light, when you have a red, green light, yellow light, red light, what's red light mean? Stop. Stop. And what stops is all fine motor skill. What you keep is strength. So you're strong, but not skilled. So you have monocular vision because you can't get your two eyes to work together to have stereoscopic vision. So with your teeth, you can't really grind well because grinding is a very skillful thing that you do and you control pressure in your mouth and all that stuff. And you grind it up so that the protein can be used by your system. And what you're typically doing is just munching. So you're not grinding. And so you either take it back out or there's these hunks of food that you may or may not be able to swallow safely. But you also, if you're going to have, you're going to put a pig in the good. <laughs> and you go, da, 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 da. And you put a pig in the head and you're going to get it, get it, get it. Yeah. <laughs> and so although that, you know, it's sort of like humorous, but the reality is I can't have the dexterian skill in my tongue, in my lips, in my teeth, in my breath control to speak and articulate. But I may, be, 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 be. I may still try to communicate. But I'm the get it, and they bet it, and I've lost my ability to take in communication in very dexterous ways. So, if you say a drink, I could go, "Oh, okay," and you think <laughs> she she gets it. We're going to do a drink, and then you try to, you know, it's like whoa, because even though I get the object, I see what you're showing me. I have no idea what you want me to do with it, and so you going a drink, and then. Also taking my hand with your hand and moving my hand toward my face, that helps integrate the part of my brain that moves. And it goes, oh, you want me to bring it to my face? Oh, oh, it's a drink. Because the ability to figure things out is also, I've got strength, but I don't have skill, which means I don't figure a lot out. And then I do, and it's like, oh, oh, but I can't hold on to it. So you get me to take one bite. You think, okay, she'll take another bite. And I just sit there. <laughs> or I eat that meal, and then, like, you think, okay, so I'll, I'll give her the drink. And she sits there with the drink. And it's like, it's a drink, Chiba, that she was eating, and now you're doing a drink. That's different. And it's like, oh, my gosh, how complicated. <laughs> But it also means the skill in my fingers and my hands, the skill in my feet, the skill of rotation, um, unilateral movement, the skill of moving safely. Um, 
the skill of managing urine and feces. I mean, that's a skill. So, wow, if I sustained it up to now, now I have a hard time doing it. I either hold, hold, hold and won't let it out. Now that's a problem. Or I let it out whenever. Or when I let it out, you know, oh, 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 I get really distressed because I'm enough aware that I should be doing something. I have no idea what to do. So the Ruby state is one of those times where, wow, you have to use a lot of skill because they are strong. And then the gift is they can sing. They can often sing familiar songs all the way through, or they can count, or they can pray, or they can, they can dance. I mean, people are amazed at them dancing. And one of the really cool things, if I go, hey, and I go like this, they will offer their hand to me. And if I go, they will go back because they copy. They will copy me if I look friendly and I'm, I'm non-threatening. Um, and I get connected. And that's where you start. Well, you, you, I'm going to have Polly, your assistant, mm -hmm. send me the code to embed your hand under hand technique video. Yeah. Because that yeah. would have really helped me with my mom. Yeah. And I yeah, thought I knew how to do it, but I didn't do it right. But well, it would really have helped your mom, too. Because your mom didn't understand most of the time what you were trying to do. And she really did, her, her primitive brain, despite you being a really good friend, got scared a lot. Because she thought you all of a sudden were trying to do things to her. And why would you have turned like that and gotten so mean? And <laughs> it was like, I just want to get this shirt off you that you've had on. And it's dirty and you spilled stuff on it, Mom. Yep. I tried to help her one day and she got really angry and frustrated with me. This was not long before she passed away. And she looked at me and jerked her arm away from me and said, Drop dead! You got it. <laughs> I'm like, okay. <laughs> like, I don't think so, but and it was it was hurtful, but it was it was very frustrating. And I she didn't like because I was her friend, she didn't like to hold hands, she didn't nope. like to hold elbows for guidance. Nope. Nope. Yeah, no. I mean, and that's one of the hard things is independent people are still friggin' independent. They just don't have any skill. And so you're trying to figure out how do we do this? And so, you know, and that's where come on along. Come on along. <laughs> and and so somebody will often dance with me. And if we're dancing and walking, that's a little different than holding hands and walking, which is what you do with little children or a, ooh, a significant person in your life. So trying to figure out how do we how do we finesse this? And that's all well and good with me being, you know, someone who's done this for 40 friggin' years. But it's really different when it's you with somebody you really love and are trying so hard or when you're a professional that nobody trained. I mean, and that's the really sad part for me is we don't train our professionals well enough to do this. And we certainly don't invest in family members who are who are in the middle of this all too often with any kind of skill set other than to say, well, they're going to deteriorate and you'll get to a place where you can't handle it anymore. It's like, okay, can we get more helpful with things that we can learn to do so that our time together could have some benefit for both of us rather than we feel like it's always this, ugh. And you offer that support. You have free training. You have paid training. Yeah. We do our best. Yeah. You know, I, know was, I, I watched you guys have to pivot during the uh, pandemic. That was, uh, I could tell oh. from this distance, it wasn't easy. <laughs> uh, it's like, yeah, let me show you hand under your hand. Okay. Uh, let me show you what happens when you do this. And then the next part you have to figure out is, okay, who's the person I'm assisting? Well, it's you. Okay. So let me get here. And I'm going to go, Ooh, you know what? Look what I have. Ooh. Is that a lollipop? Oh, no, it's a bubbly. It's a bubbly. Gotta... Here, let's try. <laughs> and so, you know, like, okay, now instead, 
here you go. Let's take a drink. Can you take a drink? You know, like, can you feel the difference? Mom, mom, look at me. <laughs> I was like, oh my God. But learning new ways to do this on Zoom, oh my heavens, this has been, um, it's been a lot, but we figured it out. But it's good for your brain. Dynamic learning. You got it. It's do it or do without it. And it's like, people still need it. I mean, people are still trying to do what they can do. So you notice that I don't have anything in my background. Bro. And that's so that when I show something here, I can show you without a lot of interference. And when I go, ooh, notice how I shift myself from the side with this being in the center to here. So there's lots of nuance that you start to develop. Um, but it doesn't mean that I wouldn't like to get back with people. <laughs> Let me just say. So do you have like tours and events planned for 2022? We're, 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 we're doing our very best. With, there are lots of rules around them because what we most sincerely don't want to do is bring people together and then, you know, have people do things that suddenly in their effort to be with us, they, they make poor choices. So we're working hard, but we are starting to do some things again. Um, we're also doing things locally and, you know, doing some broadcasts, but getting a chance to do them with real people. So that's one of our goals, too, is to offer more uh, opportunities to watch things that we do in real time with real people. And part of our adult day health opportunity here is families and the participants agree that they're going to become teachers and so part of their legacy is they come and we do things together and we can share and some days are good and some days aren't great but we get to see what it's like to work through something and to say okay well that didn't go like we wanted okay let's try this um but we're trying to be fairly transparent in creating this environment where all gems shine and everyone is welcome and it's an inclusive community that would help a lot. Yeah. We all need other people. We all need support. And that's that's what you're trying to help share yeah. with the world, I guess. That's you what I'm it. trying to share with the world in my yeah, my way. Yeah. And we're all contributing to that, you know, that world view where we work together to make this better because nobody should try to do this alone. That is true. My dad didn't do so well doing it on his own. Yeah. With two daughters that were willing to help. And he couldn't figure out how to bring that team together because he didn't he didn't want to burden you. And yet it ended up being so hard for you to watch and to feel unwanted in that relationship in some ways that you could have helped differently. And it, it would have helped because after he passed away, it was like, I knew she was Holy bad, but wow, Holy. Was really bad. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And he was, was a good our, buffer. Yeah. Our experience with my grandfather, we did not realize how much my my grandma, who had rheumatoid arthritis, was the brains of the operation until she passed away. And then it was like, whoa, uh, we had no idea. <laughs> yep, I've been there. This has yeah. been so fantastic. Teep has been doing a really great job with my not so great internet connection. <laughs> I take cues fairly well, <laughs> if I remember what I just said. Ugh. Oh, she was doing good, and I did. I think I did good, except one I time. I did couldn't, great. couldn't quite remember where we left off, but now the editor has their 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 job cut out for them to put all, put all those pieces together and cut out the glitches. Oops. But I appreciate this so much. This you was so wonderful. And Thanks I hope for the you're opportunity. Coming, you're welcome, and I hope you're coming to California soon. We are moving in december so when this comes out we will have moved Yay. to closer to sacramento currently i'm closer to san francisco so pick uh -huh. one of those two and i'll be there cool. excellent <laughs> well i am looking we have a really good friend with louis body in the sacramento area so as soon as i get a chance to be out that way and doing something i certainly will be in that area so yay wonderful this has been great thanks jim Fading Memories is also available wherever you get your favorite podcasts.